It's just sugar paste molded into something that doesn't resemble candy or corn. It's so sweet. It's sweeter than if you just ate pure sugar. I don't know how. Hey there, folks. I'm Andrew Ray, aka Binging with Babish, and I'm here today to taste and judge 32 different kinds of Halloween candy. This is a head to head tournament. Each round, two candies are going to face off, and at the end, we're going to determine which is the very best Halloween candy. We have two divisions, and we're going to start with the chocolate division. Trick or treat, smell my feet. Give me something good to eat. We rehearsed that. First up, Baby Ruth versus Snickers. I haven't had a Baby Ruth, I don't remember when. It's described as dry roasted peanuts, rich caramel, and smooth nougat. Whereas Snickers is caramel, nougat, peanuts, chocolate. Is, are these the same thing? Are these direct competitors? Perfect that you match these up, that makes sense. First up, the Baby Ruth. Rough and tumble around the edges here. We got some exposed peanuts. Not sure how I feel about that. Unwrap the Snickers here. Ooh. Ooh. The chocolate is what I'm expecting. It's kind of waxy, kind of, you know, mass produced. I don't taste the caramel at all. Definitely getting nougat and definitely getting peanuts. Let's see what happens with the Snickers. Knee jerk reaction, giving it to the Snickers. Caramel is much more prevalent. There's less nougat, which, you know, I, I think that's filler. And the peanuts are more finely chopped. You don't have these big old chonkers of peanuts. They're integrated into the candy itself. Right off the bat, Snickers takes the cake. We have Twix and 100 grand. Start with the Twix. I have a left bar here. Good stretchy, chewy caramel. Dig that, nice big old cookie. Now 100 grand, ooh. We have a much more imposing form factor here. It's a larger piece of candy and it's bespeckled with what I imagine is puffed rice or crispy crunchies as they're described on the wrapper. Oh my. This is like revelatory immediately going to 100 grand. I am a Twix apologist. I did not think that this was gonna go this way. But this thing is like pure caramel and it's got crispy crunchies that are crispier and crunchier than the Twix cookie. I would call this an upset Absolutely, 100 grand takes it. I believe Milky Way has the added benefit of caramel over Three Musketeers. Hmm. It's like 60-40 nougat caramel into that. That's the age old question, isn't it? What is nougat? I think nougat's a filler. I think that like it's very inexpensive to make and it was bold of Three Musketeers to make a candy bar that's only nougat. It's like this fluffy, semi-chocolatey, compressible insulation. I think you have to agree that the addition of caramel makes it a much more interesting, much more delicious candy experience. So I'm gonna have to go Milky Way over Three Musketeers. Battle of the plain chocolate versus the almost plain chocolate. I don't like milk chocolate in general, but especially Hershey's, which to me tastes like the wrapper that it comes in. Ugh. So it stands to, re <laughs> stands to reason that if you take the same exact chocolate style product and add crunchy puffed rice to it, it's just gonna enhance the experience. A crunch takes it because um, Hershey's, uh, <sighs> it's, it, it needs something else. It needs peanut butter or a marshmallow or a different kind of bar of chocolate to really make it work. <laughs> We have Butterfinger versus Kitted Cats. We have crispy wafers in chocolate. These ones are peanut butter flavored and they're like candy shards in there. Well, whereas these are more like a cookie wafer. I'm gonna start with the Kit Kat because frankly, I wanna leave this flavor in my mouth. I have preferences here. I love Kit Kat, but it made the mistake of getting in the Thunderdome with the Butterfinger. It's so good. I mean, I love chocolate and peanut butter. It's gotta be my favorite flavor combination on the planet. But then they added all this like crispy crunchity is the only way to describe it. They really chose apt descriptors. It, it takes it by a mile. Like, uh, I'm sorry, there's a huge mismatch. M&Ms and Reese's Pieces. This is really tough because I love both of these individually. I love them the most when they're together. In the specific context of Halloween, we gotta go Reese's because this has gotta be the most common candy handout. Reese's takes it by nose. Almond Joy versus York Peppermint Patties. Coconut versus Mint Goo. It was always a very funny form factor to me, this kind of piece of modern art here. Mm. Sweetened coconut, chocolate, almond, it's a wonderful combination. And with York Peppermint Patties, we're dealing with a much simpler combination, but I think a more effective one. We got dark chocolate, which big win for me. And you've got the same sort of icy white paste in the center, but this one is imbued with mint. 
it is refreshing. I feel as though I just brushed my teeth. I gotta go York. This is ticking all them kinds of boxes for me, namely dark chocolate. Whoa. This is the last one in the round, so <laughs> they just took the last two and they were like, figure these out. I mean, I don't even have to taste it. I'm Reese's Cup all the way. I love chocolate and peanut butter more than anything. This is kind of like chocolate clay, but this is science. It does not even taste like chocolate. What is this flavored, brown flavored? And this, mm. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups takes it by a mile. Time to move into the candy division. Airheads versus Laffy Taffy. Both of these you could get for five tickets at Chuck E. Cheese's. This is the plainly worse one. Airheads, not only are you getting better flavors, you get White Mystery. This was my favorite when I was a kid. I still don't know if every one of them is different or if White Mystery is all the same flavor. Cherry, sour apple, and banana. What are these, vegetables? Was not prepared for the electric color underneath the sun faded wrapper. Candy apple, or sour green apple. Not sour, first of all, versus the goat. White mystery. Hmm. This is not nearly as good as I remember. <laughs> the texture's not great. It's like grainy. Laffy Taffy's super smooth. Okay, we have another upset on our hands, folks. Laffy Taffy takes it in the taffy, taffy off. These are now and laters? Have I just never seen now and laters? I love Starburst, particularly pink Starburst. Let's see if I get lucky. Nope. The Battle of the Strawberries. This is a very hot pink, artificial looking strawberry. This looks like it has chunks of strawberry in it. So I'm very excited to see what happens here. Oh God. That one's got some rings on it, which has been around for a while. On to the now and later strawberry. Hmm. It's almost a dead heat, honestly, in terms of flavor, texture, and appearance, whatever on both parts. I'm, I'm giving it Starburst for sheer nostalgia factor. Ooh, what the hell? <laughs> I do not know how to objectively match these against one another. I love raspberry Tootsie Roll Pops, and I love Milk Duds. And I think this is gonna come down to freshness. Milk Duds can really go bad. Oh. Medium freshness, medium well. Just a big old hunk of caramel wrapped in chocolate. Tootsie Roll Pops, these are timeless. This thing could be 20 years old, and I would have no idea. That's the stuff for sheer variety's sake, in both flavor and texture, and consistency of quality. Again, these could be 10 years old and they'd be fine. If this was a year old, I would not even be able to eat them. Gotta go Tootsie Roll Pops, in spite of my venomously anti-Tootsie Roll rhetoric. What am I, 100 years old? What are, what, what are these? I've never met anyone who's purchased this product. I've never met anyone who's tried this product. I think they're all dead. These feel hard as rocks. <laughs> these, are, these are ancient. So this is gonna be a fantastically informative, really? Experience. They smell like chemicals or styrofoam or something. They feel and look like styrofoam. Good and plenty. Not something I think I've ever tried because it's licorice pills. Tastes like star anise. Not into it. What is this? What flavor is it? Sugar, corn syrup, gelatin, high fructose corn syrup, yellow six, artificial flavor. What is the flavor? I might not like licorice, but I love that these are candy coated and I love that they're crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside. These are just awful in every way. So we're going good and plenty for this round. Again, don't need to try this one because I know that nerds are gonna trounce Smarties. Uh, I do like Smarties, even though they're sort of unflavored sugar pellet. Yeah, lightly sour, mostly sugar, very little flavor. Still somehow addictive, still I, I actively want more. But come on, you can't beat nerds. There's only one way to describe nerds, they're a sensation. They start sweet, they end sour, they're crunchy, huge winner. As, as craveable, as weirdly, oddly addictive as, as Smarties are, gotta go nerds, they're one of the all time greats. Skittles at Dots. Dots age very poorly. They become extremely chewy and rock hard within minutes of being exposed to oxygen. Oh, it's good. It's really dense and chewy, but Skittles, I mean, come on. Double grape, won't hear me complaining. Superior flavor, texture, appearance. Skittles is the clear winner. We have candy corn versus Twizzlers. I love Twizzlers. I love being able to bite the ends off and blow air through them. These age like fine wine. I like opening these and just leaving them out, getting them real chewy. This is a classic and so are these, but it's just sugar paste molded into something that doesn't resemble candy or corn. 
it's so sweet. It's sweeter than if you just ate pure sugar. I don't know how. You eat like 10 of them and you're like, I don't even want any more candy. Twizzlers, you could eat this whole bag and be like, where are the Twixes? For flavor, appearance, texture, longevity, Twizzlers beats candy corn by wide, wide margin. Swedish Fish versus Sour Patch Kids. I love Sour Patch Kids and I will die on that hill. I love Swedish Fish too, but I love sour stuff, so. Plus you only get one flavor over here and that flavor is red. Whereas with Sour Patch Kids, you get the added benefit of a little pucker. Sour Patch Kids is better than Swedish Fish. I'm sorry, you get more flavors, you get sour stuff, you get Patch Kids. All right guys, round two, getting serious. No more funny business. 100 grand versus Snickers. 100 grand really deserves a resurgence. It deserves your attention. Snickers has the advantage of peanuts, but 100 grand is packing a ton more caramel, but also crunchy guys on the outside. It's got a denser, chewier texture. It's more satisfying. A huge part of Snickers marketing is like meal replacement for some reason. They're like, you hungry? Eat a f candy bar. 100 grand isn't doing that. They're saying this tastes like $100,000. And it does. Now we're going crunch at Milky Way. This is a tricky one. Beautiful simplicity versus textures and flavors. And even though I feel like nougat is just a filler, I'm gonna go Milky Way. You got caramel, you got some nougat, Milky Way takes it. Peanut butter candy and chocolate versus just peanut butter candy. How about that? I love Reese's Pieces, but Butterfinger's adding a whole bunch of different textures and chocolate, the most important ingredient in peanut butter. Between these two, much as I love you, Reese's Pieces, go on Butterfinger. Battle of the chocolate covered goos. This is a genuinely hard one. I love York peppermint patties. I love Reese's peanut butter cups and they're pretty much the same form factor. It's this kind of like whipped up sugar goo wrapped in chocolate. What do I do? The whole world's watching. Sorry, York. Peanut butter and chocolate's gonna beat mint and chocolate any day. Starburst at Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy was a surprising improvement upon the Airheads form factor. But Starburst for its variety of flavors and the number of flavors you get in a pack. I gotta go Starburst. Tough, tough matchup. Good and Plenty is disgusting and Tootsie Roll Pops are good. Skittles and Nerds, worthy opponents. Better fruit flavors, interesting textures, sour than sweet, crunchy. They last forever somehow too. They're like the box never empties. It's a tough decision, but I have to go nerds. Yet another, what's gonna be a contentious face off. I really love Sour Patch Kids. Once I had to go to the doctor when I was a kid because I ate too many Sour Patch Kids and I like had burned my mouth and I was in wretched pain. That's how much I love Sour Patch Kids and I only just like Twizzlers. You're getting more flavor variety here. You're getting the option to chew or suck upon. So Sour Patch Kids is taking it. So it begins. Ooh this one's an easy one for me. I've been singing the praises of, of 100 grand all day. Milky Way nougat. There's not even a gram of nougat in this thing. It's all caramel. Milky Way, I don't know how it made it later in the brackets than Snickers because I feel like Milky Way is like a worse Snickers. 100 grand is the clear winner over Milky Way. The battle of the peanut butter chocolates. Butterfinger versus Reese's Cup. This is a tricky one because this is real peanut butter flavor and chocolate versus the sort of peanut butter flavored candy, but a way cooler, more exciting texture. Ah, see, look at this nonsense, look at this. You lose a chunk of your chocolate, and I don't know about you, if you when, I, when I was a kid, this wasn't escaping. That's an added step that I don't need when I could just have the crispity, crunchity Butterfinger. I'm going Butterfinger. I think it's just a better choice for the peanut butter and chocolate mashup. Tootsie Roll Pops versus Starburst. I love Starburst. I appreciate the variety of flavors, but this little packet of two Starburst, that's gone in 30 seconds. This is taking you a solid five minutes to polish off. This is a much more exciting time to be had as a child. Last one in the round. Oh. And it's a tough one. Both are sour than sweet. That's appropriate because this is a bittersweet decision. These are what I have every time I go to the movie theater. These were my favorite when I was a kid. Sour Patch Kids squeaks it out. The semifinal round, four candies enter, only one will leave. Who? will be victorious this Halloween. Butterfinger versus 100 grand. We're getting into the territory of, I wouldn't just eat these because they're Halloween candy. I would eat this on a daily basis. 
Butterfinger, I already knew that. I would eat these any time of day, any day of my life. 100 grand, I'm just learning this today. I'm 35 years old. You can still teach an old dog new tricks. That being said, Butterfinger is one of the most unique candy experiences on the market. This sort of like fragmented sugar candy structure in the middle that still eats like a candy bar. I don't know how it works. It's magic, it always has been, and it is going to unfortunately take the crown from 100 grand. Tootsie Roll Pops versus Sour Patch Kids. I would rather have one packet of Sour Patch Kids than an entire lifetime's worth of Tootsie Roll Pops. One of the big factors here is craveability and snackability. I could eat a five pound bag of these without even realizing what I was doing. The final round. Who will reign supreme this Halloween? Sour Patch Kids versus Butter Finger. What, what we're dealing with here is sour than sweet versus peanut butter and chocolate, two of my very favorite things. And I'm being asked to choose between them. It's not fair to me or to you. Let's start with flavor. I think Butterfinger is taking the win for flavor. These taste very good, but they're more about the sour than sweet eating experience. Texture layer upon layer of peanut buttery candy flavor. A nice, light, crunch, airy texture. Craveability. I feel like I'd, I could eat a lot more Sour Patch Kids in a sitting than I could Butterfinger. In fact, I'm sure of it. You could eat a lot of these and not suffer many consequences. We're talking about, you know, something that you'd be excited to see a lot of in your candy bag because you can eat so much of it versus something you'd be excited to see because it's a special treat. Ubiquity over occasion. Light celebratory color versus deep, dark, dense intrigue. I think I'm gonna have to give the crown for the ultimate Halloween candy to Butterfinger. This is such a magical candy product, I still don't know how they do it. It still delights me every time I have one. This is like so distinctly Halloween. And as much as I love Sour Patch Kids, Butterfinger takes it home for the ultimate Halloween candy. What have we learned here today? Virtually nothing. What I say about the ultimate Halloween candy doesn't matter. What is your ultimate Halloween candy? Because that's what truly matters. That's what you want to see at the bottom of your bag. That and Butterfinger, because it's really good. This is the equivalent of, um, think of a metaphor, here we go. What's a very common thing? <laughs> this, is, this is the equivalent of finding rocks in your backyard. <laughs> and then this is the equivalent of finding slightly nicer 